Transplantation. Transplantation for any country is opening a gateway to the future to save people's lives and health. Annually, about 160 transplant surgeries are carried out on the territory of Ukraine. Unfortunately, only 10% of these transplantations are carried out by using anatomical material donated from a post-mortem donor. If we're talking about a heart, then we must carry out at least 400 heart transplants a year. This project is aimed at using management mechanisms that will work for the benefit of people and the country as a whole. Annually, about 5,000 Ukrainians need transplantation of organs. Their life can be saved by a new law passed by the Ukrainian parliament on May 17, 2018. 255 MPs voted in favor of the corresponding decision. Ukrainian scientists and patients have long paid attention to the fact that it was necessary to change law in Ukraine, but it did not solve the issue of mechanisms for ensuring the transplantation of human organs and tissues. The law on transplantation was amended by the parliament for almost two years. Scores of amendments and additions to the laws were introduced. And finally, after extensive discussions, the public and politicians came to a consensus and amended the law. However, there is quite a lot of work that remains to be done. It is necessary to adopt subordinate laws and prepare the medical community for the implementation of this law. The law on transplantation is not just about transplantation. This is about a new era in medicine. Because today people perceive transplantation as an organ transplant from a deceased donor. But speaking the truth, general transplantation is quite different. It is an opportunity to transplant donor cells and a great opportunity to transplant 3D organs. This is truly an opportunity to transplant a bone marrow from a living donor to save the lives of those who are dying and are in need of such bodily organs. Fierce debates were held regarding the issue of the definition of presumption, whether it should be presumed consent or presumed refusal. In fact, there are different approaches to transplantology in different countries of the world, and all have the right to exist. But there are precautions, people are afraid of illegal transplantology. Ukrainian society is in such a state that we must convince the people that transplantation is a benefit and this is a method of treatment that can save thousands of people's lives. Therefore, our task at this moment is to change their attitude to transplantation. The fact is that the last time we got used to the idea that transplantology can be only illegal, human organs were sold and people were killed. In this particular sphere, a new law has been well drafted. Expert Ihor Naida says that the procedure for organ transplantation is very complicated. It requires time, all the necessary medical equipment, professional staff and appropriate logistics. So there is no reason to say that someone can illegally transplant organs. It is practically unrealistic. Seeing as the parliament adopted a variant of presumed refusal, I firmly believe this is the best pretext for dispelling the myths that have been spread about so-called illegal transplantologists. The key chapter of the new law directly concerns the death of the brain. This is a fundamental issue, doctors say. In addition, it is necessary to have a timely and a high-quality system of organ delivery, their storage and a network of facilities where organs can be transplanted. The law came into force on January 1, 2019, and the Ministry of Health created a unified state transplantation information system, which contains registers of those who need a transplantation, recipients, donors and hospitals that are responsible for conducting in transplantations. This allows to select donors for recipients automatically. First of all, we must have information about the number of people who are in need of transplantation. This is an obligatory condition, because we must understand what financial costs the state can allocate to the budget in order to provide us with everything we need and cover the expenses of highly specialized treatment. Besides that, the register has to include a line item that concerns agreement or disagreement of a person for a post-mortal donation. 
As of today, about 200 patients are on the waiting list at the Amosov Institute of Cardiovascular Surgery. Among them, there are people suffering from severe heart weakness, which means they can be considered as potential candidates for heart transplantations. However, the number of such patients is higher in Ukraine. The youngest patient is only one year old. Nowadays, there are 29 cardiovascular centers in Ukraine, and only three or four of them are able to conduct a successful heart transplantation. Unfortunately, over the past 10 years, not a single heart transplantation operation has been carried out in Ukraine, though the country has a very strong network of cardiac surgery centers. We have doctors capable of carrying out heart transplantations, all the preconditions and the desire to save people's lives. But a certain misunderstanding in the legislative field and the severe lack of potential donors posed a serious obstacle to carrying out successful heart transplantations in Ukraine. Ukraine. Nowadays, two countries, India and Belarus, carry out transplantations of the heart, kidneys, liver and bone marrow for Ukrainians. For example, heart transplantation costs about $100,000 in these countries. In Ukraine, this operation would cost from six dollars to $20,000. Thus, Ukrainian doctors could save three or five people's lives for the same amount of money. Belarus has already taken a major step towards transplantation because several factors coincided. Firstly, the adoption of a law that was a presumed consent. Secondly, this is the constructive position of the state leaders, law enforcement bodies and, of course, the medical community. Nowadays, Belarus carries out 100 to 120 heart transplantations annually, which is a very high indicator for this country. We sent Ukrainian patients to Belarus not only for heart transplantation, but also for transplantation of other bodily organs. Ukraine needs about a billion hryvnias to implement the treatment abroad program. Patients are on the waiting list for years. Many of them die while awaiting surgery. In the opinion of Olha Bohomolets, head of the Committee of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine on Public Health, in order to save the people, Ukraine lacks one document that has to be drafted by the Public Health Ministry. This is the procedure for the transportation of donor cells across the border. The document provides transportation of cells provided by European funds across the border. We have already paid a billion hryvnias to foreign clinics for treatment of Ukrainian patients over the past five years. And the cost of treatment is three, four or even ten times higher than in Ukraine. Ukraine has top-notch clinics where professional doctors work. So all that is needed is to create necessary working conditions for them in order that they can earn an adequate salary and save people's lives. The law on the transplantation of organs and other human anatomical materials explicitly states who can be a donor. It is clear that a patient must have not only consent for an organ transplant, but also the organ of the deceased person must be absolutely healthy. People who suffer from general diseases and infectious diseases such as viral hepatitis B and C tuberculosis, as well as blood diseases, diabetes and immunological dysfunctions have no right to participate in the program of transplantation. It is also important to note that after a transplantation of an organ from a donor, the recipient needs lifelong immunosupportive therapy. If we're talking about immunosuppressive therapy, then of course these drugs are very expensive. However, I believe that such a state as Ukraine can afford to provide our patients with appropriate treatment despite all the difficulties, especially if we take into account the latest introduction of decentralization, according to which all the funds remain in local budgets. The budget is being replenished, so this gives local communities the capacity to provide all patients with the appropriate medical treatment at the local level. Level. Every law, of course, needs to be implemented. But the Ukrainian management system in the field of transplantology lacks well-experienced specialists. Ukraine needs transplant coordinators, who could serve as an effective link between the hospitals and doctors. A transplant coordinator is a significant person in the entire process for donation and transplantation of bodily organs and ensures that nobody has a doubt that this process is executed within the framework of the existing legislation. So Ukraine has everything necessary to transplant organs and cells. The country has modern clinics, appropriate equipment and experienced surgeons. Moreover, such treatment will be much cheaper than abroad. The newly adopted law will help save many lives. An effective mechanism, which came into force on January 1, 2019, allows for the transplanting of organs from non-relative donors in Ukraine.